Good evening students, and this is your first homework video. Today we're going to use comparative relational thinking to solve for an unknown amount. Remember to start your notes with the date and the title, and as you watch the video to choose two examples to copy. To do this, you need to remember that a variable is a missing number and that the variable can stand for any missing number. So in the equation 7 plus x equals 12, x would equal 5 because 7 plus 5 equals 12. You already know how to use comparative relational thinking to tell if an equation is true or false. Today you're going to use comparative relational thinking to solve for an unknown amount. Remember that you will be comparing the relationships between numbers and explaining your thinking for comparative relational thinking. Here's what it looks like. 5 plus x equals 3 plus 11. To solve for x in this equation, I compare the relationship between my numbers just like I did without the variable. I'm going to start with my first two numbers and think. If I have 5 to get 3, I have to subtract 2. That means from whatever number x is to 11, I have to add 2. So now I think x plus 2 equals 11. And what number would make that equation true is 9. Because 9 plus 2 equals 11. So x equals 9 because... 5 minus 2 equals 3, and x plus 2 equals 11 balances the equation. Making x 9. Let's try another example. 15 plus x equals 10 plus 24. Again, I'm going to compare my first two numbers. 15 to 10 is minus 5. So now I need to go from x to 24. So from whatever number x is to 24, I need to do the opposite of minus 5. And that's plus 5. So I think now, following my lines, x plus 5 equals 24. What number would make that true? Well, 5 less than 24 is 19, so 19 plus 5 is 24. So x equals 24 because 15 minus 5 is 10, so x plus 5 equals 24 balances the equation. Let's look at one with bigger numbers. This time, when I compare my first number, x, to 100, I'm starting with my variable. So I'm going to look at the relationship of my second numbers from 129 to 134. I'm going to add 5. That means back to my x to 100, I have to subtract 5. So, following my line again, x minus 5 has to equal 100. So I think, what number minus 5 is going to be 100? And the answer is going to be 105, because 105 minus 5 is 100. x equals 105, because now I'm going to explain starting with my known equation first. 129 plus 5 equals 134, and x minus 5 equals 100, so the equation stays balanced.
let's try two more examples. Try to think of the relationships on your own this time. If I compare 37 to X, I can't decide what's happening. So now I'm going to go from 64 to 61. So from 64 to 61, I'm going to subtract 3. The opposite of subtracting 3 is adding 3. So 37 plus 3 is going to equal x. That makes x 40. So x equals 40 because 64 minus 3 is 61. So 37 plus 3 equals x balances the equation. Let's try one more. Compare 44 to 40. I subtract 4. So x, what do I have to do to get to 110? The opposite of subtracting 4, which is adding 4. So x plus 4 is 110. That makes x 106. 106 plus 4 is 110. So x equals 106 because 44 minus 4 equals 40. So x plus 4 equals 110 to balance the equation. Now hopefully this isn't thinking that's too far from what we've done in class and this won't be as difficult as a step as when we first started with comparative relational thinking. It's time for you to take your check. But remember, do you have the date on your notes? Did you copy two examples? Is there a title? Now go back to modules and complete the check quiz for this lesson. Remember, it's not really a quiz, and your teacher will use it to set up groups for the next day. Important, remember to write your work for your problems from the quiz in your notes. That way, your teacher will see those problems as well when she checks your notes tomorrow morning. If you need to rewatch the video or watch another example, go back now. If not, good luck on your notes.